the part that he's willing to share with us. I'm eager to hear the rest of the story. Amen. I believe that God, amen, is, I saw some pictures, and you could tell the glory of God was falling. It was just amazing. I wish I had been able to have it, been able to be there. Amen. And uh, other good men that were there, Brother Rocha, Brother Jones, Brother Stewart, just know that God used the, those men and pastor in a mighty way. And uh, grateful to be a small part of that through our prayers and our fasting. Amen. Thankful to the Lord that he allowed us to, to contribute to that effort. Amen. And looking forward to what God's going to do. Amen. On the continent of Africa. Truly, it's, it's, this is a monumental thing. This is a big deal in what God is doing. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's open them to Acts chapter 9, verse 34 and verse 35. I've heard a pastor refer, I think it was Elder Sher that, that used to say that uh, Texas is just a place to, a jumping off place. So that's kind of what this is this morning. Uh, it's just a jumping off place. Amen. And, uh, and uh, I can't get too excited. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this message, but I can't get too excited because uh, as we were singing, I was nearly screaming and my voice is already trying to play out on me a little bit. So, so you'll have to bear with me today and, and ride with me and help me a little bit. Can I get your help this morning? Amen. While we work through this. Amen. Acts chapter 9 verse 34 and 35 says, And Peter said unto him, uh, Aeneas... Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwell at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Amen. Let's lay down our Bibles this morning. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Amen. To give us ears to hear, minds to understand, hearts and attitudes to receive and obey his word. Amen. Let's just talk to the Lord for a moment if we can. Jesus, we need your touch. We need your anointing. Hallelujah. I pray that you would give us the ear to hear what your spirit has to say. Let your anointing, God, flow freely in our midst today. Offer myself as a vessel, God, that you can speak through. Hallelujah, Jesus. <clears throat> I worship you. I worship you. Why don't we just clap our hands to the Lord? Let's worship him before we're seated. Thank you, Jesus. For your goodness, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning. And I've got a little bit of ground to cover. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning on this subject. The reason for a miracle. Amen. The reason for a miracle. Many times I think that we believe that we have to manufacture our miracles because uh, uh, by generating a sufficient amount of faith. I mean, we think of that scripture. Jesus says faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. You can move this mountain if you have that amount of faith. Amen. And, and so we, we begin to think based on statements like that and perhaps statements like in Matthew chapter 13, verse 58 that he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. And so they, we can take that scripture. Let me start my stopwatch so I don't go over uh, 30 minutes here. But, but uh, I do believe that there are some circumstances where God does require uh, faith as a prerequisite to achieve uh, uh, some miracle. Amen. And, uh, and I don't want to ignore those scriptures that, that I just referred to. And there's, there's another scripture that, that we read in Matthew chapter 8, verse 13, where it says that Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it, so be it done unto thee. And he and his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. I and mean, there's another passage of scripture, Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, where it says, Then touched he their eyes, talking about two blind men, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And we could take these scriptures and, and, and use them to uh, argue the point that, that we must have faith as a prerequisite for God to begin to do a miracle. And we must have, uh, I mean, a sufficient amount of faith. And God's not going to move in my situation unless I have faith. 
this amount of faith, enough faith, because Jesus clearly said, according to your faith, or as you have believed, and so on. Amen. But I want to use, amen, make a simple point, make a subtle uh, uh, clarification this morning, if I may. Amen. That these statements, uh, while they seem to indicate, uh, amen, that faith is a prerequisite, uh, amen, to performing some miracle, amen. But based on my study, amen, of God's word, it's entirely possible that the opposite is also true, that God, uh, amen, uses miracles, uh, amen, to strengthen uh, your faith and my faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to ride with me a little bit this afternoon? Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, as I studied the word, I found only one scripture. And I could completely be wrong. I could be completely, you could go home and study and, and come to me and show the scripture. And I'll believe you. Amen. I'm not trying to introduce some form of new doctrine or anything like that. But uh, as I was studying, as I was looking through the word of God, uh, I find only one scripture. Amen. Where it's clear that Jesus uh, made faith uh, a prerequisite. And that's Luke chapter 8, verse 50. When Jesus heard it, he answered, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Perhaps there are other scriptures that I've missed, amen, but but I submit to you, amen, that this, amen, was actually in the middle of Jesus' ministry, and there was a progression, amen, in Jesus' ministry from the very beginning, amen. When we look at the first miracle, and we will here in just a moment, I've got to pace myself, I've got to slow down here. Amen. But there, as when we look at the first miracle, amen, there's no mention of faith at all. There's no mention, uh, amen, of a, it being a prerequisite or a requirement for those, uh, amen, on whom uh, this miracle would be performed. We can look at it in John chapter 2, and we've got a little bit of a reading here, amen, but I just want to read this story to you so you can see for yourself that, that the miracle occurred, amen, and the Lord didn't require faith as a prerequisite. John chapter 2 verse 1 says and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage and when they wanted wine the mother of Jesus saith unto him they have no wine Jesus saith unto her woman what have I to do with thee mine hour is not yet come his mother saith unto, his, unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there, and there were set there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Verse 7 goes on to say, Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he and knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. And verse 11 says, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. And manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. Amen. This is, amen, the, where I want to kind of begin here this morning. Amen. The Bible tells us that because uh, there, there was more that transpired that day than just a transformation of water into wine. Amen. But something began to happen in his own disciples, the men who had chosen him as their leader. He, he said, uh, he, the Bible tells us that the disciples uh, believed on Jesus. Jesus because of this miracle that they witnessed. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, amen, that a miracle is more than just, amen, to make you feel better or to make you and to improve your life in some way. Amen. But a miracle, amen, even in 2023, amen, the purpose is to bring those who don't believe, amen, to a place of faith and confidence and belief in him. Hallelujah. Come on, it's tangible evidence, uh, amen, for the unbelieving eye, uh, amen, to behold uh, in their own, uh, with their own senses, uh, the glory and the manifestation uh, of God before them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No longer, amen, can 
the doubting mind. Amen. Consider, oh, maybe this man has no power. No, they can't deny, amen, the very things that they have seen. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that's the reason, amen, for a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And it wasn't just the disciples. Hallelujah. But the Bible tells us that a multitude began to follow Jesus. Amen. And uh, we see, we begin to see why. John chapter 2, verse 15. This is the, a few verses later from what we just read in verse 11. Verse 15 says, And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. Said unto them that sold doves, These things hence make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Sorry, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Hallelujah. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What signs showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? What gives you, Jesus, the authority to come into this temple and overthrow these practices that we have long established? Amen. Rabbis before you and teachers of the law before you have come and said, it's okay. And so what can you show us, amen, to authorize your authority that gives you the authority? Show us a sign. And so Jesus, amen, amen, we can read in verse 23, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover. This is the same, amen, period of time. Just a few verses later in the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Hallelujah. So his disciples begin to believe, Brother Larson, amen, and then those who were questioning and doubting and, and saying, where is the proof, amen, that we're looking for, amen, Jesus, amen, began to do signs and wonders among them for the purpose that they would believe that he is who he said he is. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It didn't stop with the disciples. It didn't stop with those in Jerusalem that day. Amen. But throughout Jesus' ministry, we read instances like this one where it tells us Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. And then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Verse 23, and all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? Is this the one that the prophets prophesied about? Amen. And if you're looking for a little bit more proof, John chapter 6 verse 14 tells us, then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did said this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world hallelujah and then again and again amen after miracle after miracle sister Tori amen people begin to pick up on something that there's real power amen associated with this man this is not just a man that claims to have power amen but he can say the word amen and this one is healed and he can speak to my god he can speak into a situation amen it's not just amen it's not just lip service there's action hallelujah 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 bible tells us verse 6 and 2 of john a great multitude followed him why because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Hallelujah. Apostle Peter got up on the day of Pentecost and preached effectively the same message that I'm preaching right now in Acts chapter 2, verse 22. It says, you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, 
a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Amen. I want to tell somebody here at the Truth Church, amen, that we don't have to leave miracles to the charismatics, amen, and let them build their little kingdoms off of, amen, what God can do. Hallelujah. Miracles are meant for more than just sensationalism, amen, and easy believism and, and all of these things, building a kingdom for some man, amen. But I'm here to tell you that every miracle, amen, that is true inspiring uh, amen in that book uh, amen and in today's world uh, it's for one purpose oh hallelujah it's so that many 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 would believe hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, you're part of something that God established, amen, and Jesus created. He didn't just, it wasn't, didn't just stop with Jesus' ministry. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but we don't have to look into the pages of God's word and say, wow, what an amazing man Jesus was. And indeed, he was an amazing man, but he was an example unto us for the kingdom that he wanted to see. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When we go and we pray, amen, we ought to believe as much as Jesus believed. When he spoke the word, I was sent to do the will of my father. Friend, I wonder how many in this place feel that way. Did you come to do the will of the father? Have you come to do business for the king? Hallelujah, hallelujah. A man approved, approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. And that's the reason, that's the purpose, so that we would know it would eliminate all kind of doubt, eliminate every Every query, every wondering, amen, there's, in countless times, you can take the time on your own and, and look through, amen, the pages of God's word and see, amen, how many times a miracle transpired and then they would say, the people wondered. And then they would, another miracle, people were amazed. The people marveled. Hallelujah, because of a miracle. What were they marveling at? They were marveling because they witnessed firsthand a, a, a genuine power. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. When John was in prison, he requested validation of who Jesus was. He said, who? He said, uh, he sent some of his disciples from, uh, he was in prison, so he couldn't go ask the question. So he sent some disciples and say, can you go ask Jesus, are you the man that we're waiting for? In Luke chapter 7, verse 20, when the men were coming to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? In verse 21, let's see how Jesus responded to these men. In that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. You're looking for proof, John. You're looking for verification. Let me just do a few miracles here. And then you guys go and tell John what you have seen and what you have heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are, lepers are cleaned, cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised to the poor. The gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Amen. Matthew 2 records the same request from John and, a, and the same response from Jesus. Amen. Let's look at what Jesus says is the reason. Jesus took a moment, and, and as I mentioned just a little 
little bit ago. And man, there was somewhat as I see it. And I, again, I could be completely wrong, but it seems to me that there was a progression throughout Jesus' ministry. And, and as our example, I mean, he began to use learning opportunities to show the apostles or the disciples who were then at that time the disciples. I mean, but who would later become the apostles and the leaders of his church, the people, the men to whom he would entrust. I mean, his, this church, the, the thing that we are a part of today. Amen. And so in these instances, I want you to see what Jesus told amen, and the disciples heard. John chapter 4, verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose, uh, whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. And he was at the point, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, listen to what Jesus said. He said, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. This is how, friend, you're going to increase your faith, is if you see the signs and the wonders. And then you can read, amen, how Jesus went on, amen, to perform the miracle. Amen, let's skip down to verse 53 and notice, amen, what happens and what transpires as a result of the miracle that happens. Verse 53 says, so the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Jesus said you can verify for yourself. Go home. Amen. Go see for yourself. Hallelujah. John chapter 10, verse 37, he says, If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I and am, am in him. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that every miracle that you have witnessed has served as a drawing to your faith, a building for your faith. Hallelujah. 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 Hey Amen. Bear with me. We're almost there and I've got plenty of time to get there. Well, I'm, I'm running out of time swiftly, but I've got a few minutes here. Hey, Amen. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Amen. T tells us, it begins to tell us a story. Amen. Where a man sick of the palsy. Amen. Lame. Amen. Stuck on his bed. Can't do anything for himself. Friend, I'm here to tell you the man did not have faith. Amen. But he had a few friends who believed for him. Amen. And there was four friends that grabbed each side of that bed. And, and you know the story perhaps as well as I. But let me recount it for you. They got up on top of the roof and began to tear off the roof and they let the man down into Jesus' presence. The Bible tells us in verse 17 that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Amen. These men recognized the power of God that was in that place. They heard the words of eternal life. They understood who it was that was speaking that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 23. Amen. The Bible tells us uh, that it wasn't just, uh, amen, a healing that took place. Uh, but Jesus uh, let them know. Uh, he gave them personal revelation uh, that he was more than just a prophet. Uh, more. Amen. That the Father was in him uh, and that he was in the Father. That he had power. Hallelujah. Amen. To not only heal, but also to forgive. Verse 23, whether it is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. Verse 24, he goes on to say, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. My God. Hallelujah. Amen. I wonder how many of us, amen, struggle, amen, day in and day out. Amen. Did he really wash it away? Did he really forgive? I'm here to tell you, amen, he did and he will. Oh God, 
Come on, let's magnify the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just entertain the presence of the Lord right now. Hallelujah. 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 Hey Amen. You could be seated. Let me try to make it a little further. Hey Amen. I'm not trying to negate the power of faith. Please understand. Hey Amen. I'm not trying to say, uh, hey Amen, faith is useless. The Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. I'm not doing away with any of that, but I'm here to tell you, hey Amen, that God can and God will perform, hey Amen, the works that are necessary to build your faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. James said that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. Not the prayer, amen, for those who have faith. Amen. But the prayer of faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, if you don't have enough faith to hit an altar anyway, if you don't have enough faith to believe God, you can come and God can heal, God can deliver, God can save, and God can forgive. Hallelujah. Verse 24, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And then he turns and looks at the, the young man. So as I say unto you, arise, take up your couch, and go into thine house. Hallelujah. You see, this young man, he got up, took his couch, and moved on. Saw his, he, he had the physical, tangible, visible miracle. Jesus said, just like that, I can forgive sin. I did that so you could know. Oh, Hallelujah. I wonder. Oh, hallelujah. Holy Ghost is moving in this place right now. He wants you to understand. He wants you, amen, to build your faith. He wants to show you, amen, that he's able. That your situation is not too hard. Hallelujah. And even if you don't believe it, amen, don't just take a chance. Amen, offer it to him. You don't have to be some faith superstar. You don't have to be some over spiritual zealot. What I'm preaching to is a normal person. Amen, a person who just believes that Jesus is who he says he is. Come on that faith. Come with that in your mind and in your heart. And God will meet your need. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 How many times has the devil tied you to that pew? Amen. With the thought that I'm not worthy. Amen. That he's not going to do it for me in my situation. Hallelujah, but you're missing the reason for a miracle. You're missing the reason, amen, that he's asking you to come. He's, you're missing the reason. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, the power of the Lord is in this place to heal. And that you might know. Oh, come on, that you may know. Not that you could hope, not that you could dream, not that you could just, just, if you could just eke out this enough, no, that you would know when you leave this place today. Oh, come on, let's just talk to the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Friend, God wants to use your story. God wants to use your problem. God wants to use the thing that you're facing. Amen. To win many, many, many souls. Hallelujah. Amen. As a result of the young men who was raised up off of the bed, the Bible says 
uh, not just a few, uh, not just many, but the Bible says that all were amazed uh, and they glorified God uh, and were filled with fear, uh, saying, we've seen strange things today. We can't deny what we saw. I can't doubt it anymore. This is a man. This is a prophet. He's a fulfillment of what all the prophets have told me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Bear with me for just a few more moments. Amen. I feel like, amen, God's bringing revelation and understanding. And I know I see a few up here, amen, that understand. Amen. But I'm not just preaching to a few. I'm preaching to everybody under the sound of my voice. I want you to understand, amen, that your situation is not an exception. Amen. That your situation is not exempt from the promise of God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's just talk to the Lord for a little bit. He cut up a siata, ya la 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 Hallelujah. You sang the song just a few moments ago. I go to the rock. He's higher than I. He's a refuge for me. When I'm going down, when the world is sinking, I'm going to the rock. My friend, all I'm asking you to do is do what you sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cast your cares on him. Amen. For he cares more than even you. Hallelujah. You can be seated for just a moment. I mean, if you don't mind, just play. I mean, stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost, if you will. Hallelujah. John 11 relays to us the story of Lazarus' resurrection. Amen. It was a precursor, amen, to another resurrection. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But Jesus used this story, this miraculous event, amen, to build the faith of his very close friends and again of his disciples. Amen. John chapter 11, verse 1 tells us now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and uh, in the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, who brought, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, be behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus, oh, hallelujah, behold, Lord, the one that you love, you got to get an understanding of how the Lord is looking at your situation. He loves you. Amen. He wants you uh, to be healed uh, and deliver. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus heard it. He said the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And then he goes on to say in verse 14 to the disciples that Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that, it was, that I was not there. Why? To the intent that ye may believe. Amen. But Jesus, we already said we believe. We saw the miracle in Cana. Amen. But this is a different kind of miracle. This is the resurrection of the dead. Amen. This is breathing new life back into a, a hopeless situation. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the intent that you might believe. Nevertheless, let's go unto him. First, Jesus, amen, emphatically says that the situation is grim and hopeless. Amen. But the purpose is so that those who would see it would believe. Right, right, right. Hallelujah. 
They were getting ready to have a literal revival. They were getting ready, amen, to see a dead friend raised back to life. Hey man, you hear the story, the, and many of us know this story, so just bear with me. But Jesus, in verse 41, says they took away the stone from the place uh, where the dead was laid. We're talking about Lazarus. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that, thou, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to me, church. I hope some of you are getting what I'm trying to convey this morning. Hallelujah. So that you can believe, so that you, amen, would believe that he, amen, would send, amen, to redeem us and to heal us. When he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Verse 44, he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, loose him and let him go. The Bible tells us in verse 45, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. We begin to see the whole reason to the intent that they would believe, Jesus said. And then Jews begin to believe. But it didn't stop there. If we flip over to chapter 12, the Bible tells us in verse 9, much people, the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there. Talking about Jesus. That they, and they came not for Jesus' sake only but that they might see Lazarus as well, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Verse 11, because that by reason of him, because they saw a dead man walking, because they saw, and like, the, the, there were some there that said, we're going to kill, we're going to get rid of this power. We're going to deny the power of Jesus, amen, by killing the man again. Yeah. Amen. And why do they say that? Because there was some of their own faith, of their own religion that went away and believed on Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Yet one more time. Jesus said, I've got to do it again. I've got another miracle in mind. I'm building the faith of this multitude. I'm building the faith of my church. I'm building the faith of my believers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it was so, this, this practice of performing miracles to the intent that people would believe was so successful. It was such a great testimony to Jesus' ministry and who he was. I want you to pay attention to how the Pharisees looked at it. The Bible tells us in verse 16, these things understood not as disciples at the first. Let's skip down to verse 18. For this cause, the people also met him. I may have skipped down too far. Let's go back to verse 17. The people, therefore, that was with him when he saw Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. People that were there that day. The people that saw Lazarus come out of the grave, they were testifying. So I saw it too. I saw Lazarus come out. And because of the fact that they were bearing record, verse 18 says, For this cause the people also met with Jesus, met him. For they heard that he had done this miracle. Verse 19, And the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how we prevail nothing. The whole world is gone after him. 
I can almost see it, Brother Larson. They just throw up their hands. We can't do anything. We can't stop it. We, this is too powerful for us. Hallelujah. We can't deny what they're seeing with their eyes. Even if we were to go and kill Lazarus now, it's too late. The impact has already made its way into their heart. Amen. There have already been so many that have gone away. Behold the world. Oh, you want to know how to have revival? Amen. In the 2023, amen. When, amen, it's heating up over in Israel. Amen. We need to have the body of Christ operating in the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 We don't need. Some cheap, charismatic, sensational move. I mean, from the tinkling of a piano to the rolling of the drum to the, to the sound of an organ. It doesn't come from that. It comes from the almighty God in heaven above so that they might believe that we are in him and that he is in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that one day, one day and I don't believe it's going to be very far in the future, there's going to be some saying, you know, that true church down there. I mean, do you perceive how we prevail in nothing? Behold, <laughs> the whole city, the whole town, everybody. I mean, they're witnessing for themselves the glory of God, the power of God. <laughs> Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Jesus told the disciples in John chapter 14, verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I'm going to the Father, I left the church behind, full of power, full of grace, full of truth. Come on, shut up. Come on, church. There's something great about this thing. It might be just a few of us, and we might undermine the authority and the power of God because of that. Hallelujah. But don't neglect what the Word of God is showing us. Hallelujah. Many times we focus on the latter part of this verse. We talk about the works that we do, that they're going to be greater than what Jesus did. Amen. But Jesus caveated this with one simple phrase, and he said, He that believeth on me. This is where faith is required. This is where faith is required. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You could be seated just a little bit more. Uh, uh, bear with me. Amen. The Bible tells us, uh, amen, Matthew chapter 21, verse 21, that Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, amen, but also if ye shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, amen, and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. Hallelujah. And he says, all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Hallelujah. I'm not contradicting what I was saying just a few moments ago. Hallelujah. I don't think if you need a miracle, if you need God's touch in your life, you need the power of God to move in your life, you need a miracle, financially, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. You don't have to have some measure of faith to get your miracle. You can come to these altars in just a few moments, and God will meet you there. You with the Holy Ghost. God will meet you here. God will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. God will meet your financial need, your emotional need, your mental need, your physical need. And the reason is so that others would see it. The reason is so that others would see it. Hallelujah. But here's a nuance that I want us to understand. I think this is important. 
That if we as an apostolic church are going to operate in the gifts of faith and the gifts of the working of miracles, then we do have to have faith. We have to believe what we're saying. We have to believe what we're doing. It can't be just going through the motions. It can't be just acting like it. We have to actually believe that if I lay hands on this person, that they will receive their healing or that they will receive their infilling. Hallelujah. Or that it goes beyond just the ministry. Amen. But it goes into uh, the church themselves. Uh, perhaps you know a loved one. Uh, amen. That is sick uh, or in need of prayer, uh, need of a miracle. I mean, you can't just go, oh, Lord, I pray that you touch them. It's a prayer of faith that saves the sick. You have to get, uh, amen, a firm faith, uh, a firm belief. Uh, Jesus said it's only the amount, uh, amen, the size of a grain of mustard seed. That's all it really takes. Uh, but you do have to have uh, faith. Hallelujah. Amen. But let me tell you, if you're struggling with your faith this morning, somebody hear me this morning. I really feel like God is speaking to more than one person in this house. Uh, that God's dealing with you. And that you know of a need. You've already got it in your mind. Amen. And God wants to meet that need before we leave this place uh, this morning. Amen. And if you give it to him, uh, amen, I'm not asking amen, for some measure of faith from you. I'm just asking you to obey. Right, 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 right. Hallelujah. 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 And God will show his power. Hallelujah. That you may know that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me, Jesus said. Luke, cha John chapter 14, verse 13. Notice how clearly Jesus says this. He doesn't insert any caveats. He doesn't pull any punches, brother Toby. His statement is absolute. Whatsoever. Whatever you ask in my name. That's the power right there. That's where it comes from. It's not the ministry of any man. It's not, it's not the, charis, the, the charisma of him. It's not any of that. It's because of the name of Jesus. If you ask in his name. That will I do. Why? That the Father might be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's not us that's doing it. Even if we're praying for somebody in a hospital, it's not us that's doing it. Amen. We're just acting in obedience to the command of Jesus. Amen. To his disciples and to us. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. No doubting, no questioning, no hesitancy. Amen. Just ask and I'll do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not trying to be like the disciples that came to Jesus, said, Jesus, oh, look at the spirits there, even subject to us when we call on your name. And then Jesus responded to them and said, there's a reason for that power. There's a reason for that anointing so that those names will be written amen, in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus uh, repeatedly, I'm getting ready to close. Musicians, you can come. Jesus repeatedly, amen, over and over. Amen. As the disciples were working with him, Jesus took opportunity to say, where's your faith? Amen. On the Sea of Galilee, when the storm began to rage, they said, master, 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 don't you care that we're going to die? Jesus said, where is your faith? I'm laying down. I'm trying to get some rest. Uh, amen. I'm tired. Why don't you just speak to the wind? Uh, amen. I'm paraphrasing a bit here. Amen. Why don't you, uh, amen, just speak to the wind in my name? Amen. You're going to calm the winds. Get there. Still among the crowd that's astonished and amazed. Hallelujah. Jesus is still working on their faith. Jesus is still building their faith. He said, where is your faith? That's verse 25 of Luke chapter 8. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. When they were come to the multitude, there came a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, 
have mercy on my son. He's a lunatic, sore vexed. Oftentimes he falls into the fire and often to the water. Amen. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. I feel like this is where the Lord wants us to be right now. Hallelujah. I feel like God is working. Amen. He's working on those of us, amen, who need more faith. Amen. But he's trying to remind the true church, amen, that there's real power in this place. There's real authority in this place. Hallelujah. I brought them to your disciples. I went to the altar. I went to church. I prayed. I asked. And I didn't get my miracle. You can begin to play. I had to go home with the same vexation. I had to go home with the same trouble. I had to go home in the same condition. What gives? Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? He said, I gave you this power. And the other scripture that we read just a moment ago, gave you the power because I'm going to my father. I'm leaving. I'm not going to be here in bodily form any longer. But I'm leaving this power with you. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? <laughs> Bring him hither to me. There was no doubt in what Jesus could do here. Every man in that, in that assembly, in that congregation that day, knew who to go to. They had faith in Jesus. But Jesus was saying, I don't want you, amen, I've got to get you to understand that you don't have to bring it to me. I'm leaving a power with you. I'm giving you the authority so you can accomplish the same thing. Let me show you one more time. Let me show you one more time. Bring him here. Bring him here. Verse 18, and Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said to him, because of your unbelief. I know later it says, this kind goes now but by prayer and fasting. But I want you to understand Jesus' immediate response here. Jesus said, it's your unbelief. If you want to do the work, if you want to call on my name, if you want to see the miracle, you have to believe. How many in this room ever think that Jesus questioned that power one time? No, absolutely not. When Jesus acted, he had absolute confidence. He had absolute faith. It was, he was a pure embodiment of faith. He was our example. And that's the amount of faith that I hope to get to. Amen. I'm certainly not ever going to be, amen, equal with Jesus. Amen. But I want that kind of faith so that people can know, that people can see it's not to build up any person or any assembly or any organization. It's to draw people to Jesus. That's the reason for a miracle. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a, it's a tool. God wants to use your faith. God wants to use your faith, amen, to win many, many souls unto him so that the world would go after him, so that everybody could see in an undeniable fashion that they could know, that they could know. Hallelujah. I mean, if we struggle with our faith, I mean, if we kind of stumble with our faith, how will they know? But if we go in absolute confidence, not in ourselves, but in the name of Jesus, in the power of his resurrection, in the power of his blood, amen, and we declare, amen, without hesitation, without reservation,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're struggling with your faith, amen, I'm praying that you come to this place, this altar, and God will heal you. God will deliver you. Or watch as God delivers. See as God works on the lives of others. And God will build your faith. Hallelujah. You can read through the book of Acts uh, the number of times uh, and you can see uh, him and Peter uh, how he finally got it. Uh, amen. I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, amen. But when Peter amen, healed the man of the gate uh, called beautiful. Amen. The Bible tells us that many marveled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was another instance in Acts chapter 3. Yeah, it was, it was the same instance. Uh, when the man was brought up uh, and his ankle bones received strength and he began to worship Worship God. Everybody in the temple said, whoa, that's the guy that was at the that was at the gate. That's the guy that was lame. And verse 4 of Acts chapter 4 says, many of them which heard the word believed. And the number of men was about 5,000. The way that these folks heard. The way that the apostles got these folks' attention was through that miracle. Everybody knew who he was. Everybody understood who he was. I mean, let's all stand together. Acts chapter 5 verse 14 said, And believers were the more added to the church, multitudes, both men and women. How? By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all in one accord in Solomon's porch. And that's when the believers came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have an obligation not to cheat this world out of the full power of God's Spirit. How many souls? are being lost right now, are going to be lost because of our lack of faith. Oh, my God. You have to understand the reason for the miracle. It's not to build your name up. It's not to build your kingdom, build an organization for you, build your ministry. It has nothing to do with that. It's so that people, I mean, so names can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I have no doubt, amen, that the miracles, the gifts of the Spirit that were in operation, amen, in Johannesburg, was so that those who were in attendance at that conference would believe in the message that was being preached. Friend, we got the message. We've got the truth. We don't have to back up one inch. We don't have to hesitate one moment when declaring the Word of God. So why, 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 why do we hesitate when we talk about the power? Why do we think that our situation is too hard? Why do we believe that we're too, our situation is too nuanced and difficult? Why? This is absolute truth. Does anybody have a need in this place this morning? I mean a need. I mean, I, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to minimize any situation. But if you have a need, please don't hesitate. If you feel what I'm feeling right now, if you feel the power of God in this place, God wants to show you, amen, not only that he can perform a miracle, but he wants to show you that there's a reason for your miracle. I hope, Pastor, that we can write testimony after testimony on our website, amen, telling this community, amen, of how many things that God did, amen, on this Sunday morning. Come on, is that the only one or are there any others that have a special need this morning? Yeah, perhaps I'm putting you on the spot, just like Jesus did the man with